Welcome to our group life discussion as we are unpacking love in an introduction way as our theme for this year. We're talking about love, the way that Christ introduced us to this new covenant and how this new covenant actually relates to a new commandment that Jesus gave. But when we talk about love, it is the reality that uh, we're not talking about a, a warm, fuzzy feeling around the heart. We are not talking about red hearts and Valentine's Day. We are talking about the culture of the kingdom of God. We are talking about the future reality of God's world being presented as a now reality in our world as we become the presence of Christ in this world. We are talking about the heart of authentic Christianity. You see, the love thing is actually very confusing in our world. We will use the same word um, love for many different things. Um, one moment we will say, I love pizza. And the next moment I will say, I love my spouse. Then I will say, I love McDonald's. And then I will say, I love Jesus. Clearly, love is not well defined in our culture and could mean a bunch of different things. So as Christians, for us to understand what the biblical concept of love is, is very important. It is a core element of our understanding of the good news of the gospel. It is a core element of understanding our theology. And if we are confused about what love is, we might end up not understanding what this new commandment is that Jesus actually gave us. So the Bible says that God is love. This is the way that John puts it in uh, his letter in 1 John 4 verse 7 to 9. He says, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God, and whoever love has been born of God and knows God. Anyone who does not love does not know God, because God is love. See what John is saying is that the definition of love is not our definition that we project on God, because that might go crazy. Then we would maybe take something of a Valentine, red, hard, warm, fuzzy feeling love, and we would project that on God, and we would say, now that is who God is. And of course, that cannot be. What John says is that God defines love. In other words, everything that God is and everything that God does is an expression of his love. Whether it be his anger or his grace, whether it be his wrath or his provision, all of God's actions are saturated by his love. So what does this mean? There's a fantastic story that John also captures in his gospel in John chapter 8. As he tells the story of how the scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman caught in adultery to Jesus. And it's so crazy how, how John explains it. He says, now the religious leaders, they brought this lady and they made her stand in the center. And I, I just, when I read this, I realize that religion will always put guilt in the center. And in this moment where guilt is in the center, we see all the different facets of God's love being expressed in this moment. The first thing that happens is the religious leaders tell Jesus, they say, teacher, this woman was caught in an act of committing adultery. The law of Moses, the old covenant, commanded us to stone such women. What do you say? Of course, they ask this question to trap Jesus in order that they might have 
evidence against him. John tells the story in saying that Jesus stooped down and he started writing on the ground with his finger. When they persisted in questioning him, he stood up and said, the one without sin amongst you should throw the first stone at her. Suddenly, it was quiet. Guilt still at center stage. Jesus stooped down and again continued writing in the sand. When they heard this, they left one by one, starting with the older men. Only he was left with the woman at the center. When Jesus stood up, he said to her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? No one, she answered. Neither do I condemn you, Jesus said. Go and from now on do no sin anymore. The three dimensions of God's love is so visible in this story. The first dimension of love is the dimension of justice. You see, the religious leaders, they bring this woman to Jesus and put guilt on center stage so that justice, meaning that what is right, will be accomplished. Then Jesus surprises them because he introduces a new sense of justice because the old sense of justice was one what is right and what is wrong. And Jesus introduces a a justice system of value where the value of an individual is as graded higher as the, as the behavior of the individual. And suddenly everybody is confronted with this new sense of justice. While the old system of justice was self-justifying and devaluating against humanity, Jesus values the person and puts the person with his whole story, with her whole story at center stage as he values humanity more than their behavior. The next moment, Jesus, of course, gets up and he makes this statement. He says, let the one who has no sin <laughs> throw the first stone. And the crazy thing about this is Jesus was actually the only one in that circle that had no sin. He had the right to judge. But then we see the second element of God's love. As Jesus asks this lady the question and say, did they not condemn you? And she says, Lord, no, they did not. And then these beautiful words, words of grace. As Jesus says, neither do I. That is what Paul explains in the book of Ephesians as he says, God lavished us with his grace. You see, this was not a get out of jail free card. This was the restorative power of God's love, taking a broken individual, being a victim of a story of brokenness and restoring that person because of her value to God's original intent for her life. And this lady from this moment on plays a significant role in the story of Jesus on planet earth. That is grace and it is the second element of God's love but the story doesn't end there after Jesus lavishes her with grace he also turns to her looks her in the eye and says don't sin anymore you see truth is an element of love and Jesus doesn't hold back on truth because he gave grace no because God's love will always try to keep us safe from the damaging effects of sin. And that's where sin, where, where love actually is seen in truth as it addresses the real time issue of our brokenness. You see, 
Love is not a fuzzy feeling. It's not something that I just have this warm-hearted kind of conviction. It is not this little motivation of doing something benevolent, doing a little good in this world. Love is God in action. Love brings justice built on value. Love brings grace. Love brings truth and love brings restoration. We will now spend time to discuss this in our groups. Your group facilitator is ready with questions for group discussion.